I'm going to speak um, on pregnancy and uh, emergency general surgery, which is um, not trauma. You're going to hear about pregnancy and trauma next. I have nothing to disclose. Um, general surgery emergencies are quite quite varied, can be quite many different things, but the same things that you would see in a normal person, you see in, a, in the person that's pregnant. And then it becomes a challenge. How do you deal with this? And you essentially have to think that you have two patients. You have both the mother and the child to think about. Just as a reminder, I throw this up here, anatomic landmarks, because um, you want to remember you know, the size of the growing child. And at and you can see the different landmarks here. I'm not going to read them all, but just to point out that at 20 weeks of pregnancy, the fundus reaches the umbilicus. Um, this pushes everything else up and uh, becomes a challenge if you're considering laparoscopy for the treatment of your emergency general surgery procedure. Um, and so it's just a reminder of what the landmarks are. are. Um, so what are we talking about for emergency general uh, surgeries. The goal is to minimize fetal risk. There will be a risk not only from the operative intervention we're considering, but also from the disease that they're already come in with. So whatever is the emergency general surgery disease is already putting the fetus at risk. But the goal is to minimize fetal risk without compromising the safety of the mother. Another uh, thing to think about is the favorable outcomes depend on accurate and timely diagnosis <clears throat> with prompt intervention. And so think through that because often there's a reluctance to, for instance, provide radiation in the form of uh, an x-ray or a CT scan, which could potentially delay a diagnosis, which could potentially make things worse. So this is the overlying thing. Favorable outcomes really do depend on uh, an accurate diagnosis that's done timely, and then with prompt intervention. The most common things um, that we're gonna, I'm going to talk about today are the radiological considerations just briefly. But appendicitis happens to all ages, including the pregnant female. Gallbladder disease, similarly, and um, briefly on pancreatitis and bowel obstruction. But the most common thing you will see is appendicitis and gallbladder disease. The just a few comments on the radiologic consideration, because it always comes up. You know, under 5 rads has, has not been associated with an increased risk of fetal uh, anomalies um, in, or with pregnancy loss. And uh, a typical CT scan, uh, for instance, usually delivers, just one, delivers under five rads. So it's something to remember. However, um, the recommendations are to try to start with something without any radiation, like, such as ultrasound or even an MRI as the first line in your making your diagnosis. So if it's possible, use ultrasound first. Um, is it can diagnose many causes of abdominal pain. Uh, you may not have already known the diagnosis, but they may have a, a nexal mass, torsion, placental abruption, many things that may be related to the pregnancy itself, even uterine rupture, fetal demise, placental previa. All of those can be um, somewhat looked at with ultrasound. And then uh, other things to consider is when performing ERCP, you need to remember to shield the baby and to do that with placing the shield underneath the patient to shield the fetus. So in pre-op decision making, once a decision has been made, and I'm not going to go through, I don't have the time to go through how to make all the decisions, but similar to um, a non-pregnant patient, make a decision to whether an operation is needed to treat this surgical disease. And once an operation um, has been decided upon, the surgical approach, either laparoscopy or uh, laparotomy, is basically should be based on the skills of the surgeon. Um, and if you, as the surgeon, know that you can do it uh, laparoscopically, even despite the pregnancy, then it's acceptable. So the risks of laparoscopy itself are not greater than the operation itself. 
And the benefits of laparoscopy are similar to that of the non-pregnant uh, patient, faster recovery, less pain, et cetera. The other thing to think about in pre-op decision making is that recent literature shows that pregnant patients may undergo laparoscopy at any trimester without an increased risk to the mother or the fetus. There is some risk of having the disease in the beginning, and that it puts the fetus at risk, but the operation itself doesn't get um, the patient in any, any benefit to delay an operation that's needed. And often this has um, been uh, the, the thought process in the past. Uh, so if you decide that an operation is indicated, Delaying it for after the pregnancy is over or from the first trimester into the second is really not what's recommended. Rather, to treat the, treat the problem timely. And any trimester, it's acceptable to um, proceed with an operative treatment. Postponing a necessary operation until after uh, parturition has been shown to increase complications for both the mother and the fetus. So, other things to think about, intraoperative positioning. You know this from trauma, left lateral decubitus position um, to place the patient in during the operation if it's possible. And other things to think about in laparoscopy, um, getting in um, safely is, is very important. Initial access should be done uh, very high in the subcostal um, area. Adjust, a tro adjust the trocar placement to account for the uterine size. Um, you may consider a, a lower insufflation, um, depending on the physiology, but 10 to, 10 to 15 has been considered safe, and you don't have to make yourself struggle by trying to use eight. Um, Intraoperative carbon, uh, carbon dioxide uh, monitoring has been recommended in the past. Um, but as it's, it's been shown that it's not that necessary, really, a capnography, the, just monitoring your end tidal CO2, is sufficient during laparoscopy. Uh, fetal heart monitoring, also um, not necessary during the procedure, um, rather pre-op and post-op monitoring, just to check that the fetus is viable, is the standard, and not to proceed with intraoperative monitoring. Um, and what is viable? Well, considering this changes uh, every couple of years, but currently viability is considered between 22 and 24 weeks. In acute appendicitis, again, pretty common, one in 1,000 to 2,000 pregnancies, and it can occur any time in the pregnancy, fetal loss is um, a consideration and does occur in 3 to 5% of pregnant patients, um, but it's higher in perforation. So delaying a diagnosis or even an operation can make things worse. The, the fetal loss can go up to 36% with perforation. This is a workup. You can see the, um, how you might consider um, the workup for appendicitis, and it's in the slide set. I won't go through all of it, but using ultrasound initially, MRI if it's available, and um, deciding whether an operation is needed and then promptly proceeding. Uh, laparoscopy is still the preferred approach, and uh, non-operative management um, is not generally recommended. Moving quickly on to gallbladder disease, it's, it's also common. One in a thousand pregnancy may develop uh, symptoms, and they may be uh, biliary colic or and have recurrent symptoms. Um, and again, keeping the patient struggling through these recurrent symptoms only to get worse as it gets farther in the pregnancy is not advantageous. Rather, cholecystectomy should be done early. Non-operative management increases the risk of them developing a gallstone pancreatitis, and laparoscopy can be safely performed in any trimester. Um, cholangitis, if that's the case, uh, go through this. It's the same diagnosis. Again, start with ultrasound or even MRCP. Um, treatment involves antibiotics and drainage as needed. ERCP is the first line, and although um, it, it, alternatives do include percutaneous transhepatic drainage or laparosc laparoscopic com common bile duct exploration, but it's, it's appropriate to do ERCP if it's needed, even during pregnancy. And then cholecystectomy should be performed during the same hospitalization. Pancreatitis, I'll just skip 
ahead to uh, keep on time, but cholecystectomy is also recommended during the same hospitalization for pancreatitis when pancreatitis is, is uh, due to gallstones. And in bowel obstruction, you treat the patient similarly. It's usually caused by adhesive disease, less commonly with volvulus, um, IV hydration bowel rest, attempt at decompression, um, and then proceed to the operating room if medical management fails. So similar to the non-pregnant patient. Um, monitoring, this is just some of the uh, normal signs. Fetal rate of 120 to, to 160 is, is the normal. And beat-to-beat -beat variability is the autonomic function. Um, and then baseline variability uh, is to look for fetal movement. And absence of that fetal movement suggests a depression in, in the CNS of the baby and, for instance, decelerations, especially late decelerations. And then there are some other normal changes in pregnancy you want to be aware of. You can read through this. And I'm going to stop there because I want to end on time. Thank you very much for your attention.